I know what you're wondering. How do you become successful? And what do you do in that process while you wait? Hi, I am Olympia LaPointe, host of Answers Unleashed, seen on AnswersUnleashed.com. And this is our weekly quantum deciding video, a part of the Answers Unleashed series. And I'm excited because I am back here with you today. I have taken a little break for the last couple of weeks. I took care of a couple of things in my personal life, and I am back now to share with us the weekly tips so we can become successful. Today's video is about success, and it's not straight. It's not a straight line, but rather it's a curve. It's a cycle. And if you think that success is always straight up and you're going to shoot to success, you are in for a surprise because success doesn't happen that way. Rather, in everything, it doesn't matter if it is a new business, if it is your education, if it is a relationship, it will start off great, but you will come across such disappointments and that is the natural process of anything that you begin. The question is, how do you stay focused and how do you keep moving forward towards what you want when you encounter disappointments, when you encounter the tough situations, that's the dark side of the process, the dark side of going to school, which is having to sacrifice something in which uh, you really love, uh, the dark side of relationships, every single person has a, a part of them that they have to continuously work on and grow and how do you accept that in yourself and others, the dark part of starting a business where you don't know how you're going to get the funding but you know what you want to do. In every single situation, success is not a straight line, it is curved. And today's video is going to help you understand how to navigate those curves, how to go through those situations and find out in that peak moment of success, how can you take those critical aspects of success and carry them with you in moments, weeks, and years ahead when that valley of success hits. Not everything is going to be straight up, but you're going to have a cycle. This video is going to give you the three decisions, how you can navigate that success curve and still move forward. All right. I'm excited here because uh, this is a part of my AnswersUnleashed.com platform. It is the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics platform that's coupled with faith. I always believe that science and faith together gives you innovation. And with innovation, you have to make effective decisions. And that's what brought us to uh, my new quantum deciding planner. If you go to answersunleashed.com slash quantum deciding planner, you will see the planner and download that uh, there for your success. Now, uh, success is curve. That is what we're talking about today. So what are the three decisions that you can make when you're going through the ups and downs of success? What can you do? Well, I'm going to give us three decisions and in doing so, I'm going to share my own personal story with you. And these personal stories will help you understand how things work together when you stay committed to the outcome. The first decision is this. Let me put the first decision up. There we go. The first decision is this. You don't give up when you hit disappointment or discouraging situations. You have to have faith. I'm going to share this story with you so you understand this concept. Now, when I was young, I wanted to become an aerospace engineer. I went to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory when I was six years old and I told myself I wanted to be like the, the rocket scientist that I saw at Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And they weren't real life, they were on a picture on the wall and I told myself I wanted to be just like the men. Uh, later on in life, I was able to 
become an aerospace engineer and help help successfully launch 28 NASA space shuttle missions into space. But I almost gave up. And I almost gave up because I failed algebra. I failed calculus, geometry, chemistry. I had to take the classes over. And there was a school down the way. It was USC, University of Southern California. That was a couple blocks from my house. And I used to see the students traveling to the college all the time. And I told myself I wanted to go to USC. I didn't understand how competitive, 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 competitive it was. And when I applied in high school to be considered for attending USC, I got a big fat rejection letter. It was horrible. I mean, it says the rejection letter. I, I don't have it. I'm, I'm sure I threw it away years ago, but it basically said, uh, we've looked at your qualifications and we, <laughs> we're we pretty sure that you should go somewhere else. I mean, it didn't say those exact words, but I remember reading that thinking to myself, well, and I remember crying. And I thought to myself, what am I going to do? Well, years, well, uh, years passed and I was successfully admitted to California State University Northridge where I, I didn't major in aerospace engineering, but rather I majored in mathematics. And I graduated top of the class. It was, I was one out of five top graduates out of a 6,500 graduating class at California State University Northridge. When I graduated, I was really happy, and the job that I gained after graduating was working for the Boeing Company. And when I first started working there, I was in an accounting department. I wasn't even in aerospace. I wasn't even doing aerospace work. And I landed that job because one of my schoolmates started at the company a couple of months prior and I called up Human Resources and asked to submit my resume because he was working there. Well, I landed the role. I was doing accounting work with my mathematics. And to my surprise, my mentor at the company was an aerospace engineer. And after a year working in the accounting department, he pulled me over to his department where I became, my job title became propulsion scientist. And I was using mathematics to help successfully launch the space shuttle main engine, a part of the space shuttle program that was launched by NASA. Now, it was most ironic because the people that I was directly working with were USC graduates. And as I looked left and right, the people that I was working with on a daily basis happened to be graduates from USC. And I then had the epiphany, the rejection letter that I received was the blessing because it gave me a shorter, less expensive route to get to the same endpoint. And the same endpoint was the ability to still be in aerospace with the qualifications and knowledge that it took to launch the space shuttle. The reason why I share this story is so often you will become discouraged when you have an idea in your head and you want it to go out the way that you have planned, but the effort that you have taken and put forward towards a certain type of outcome isn't happening the way that you think it's going to. And as a result, you have a decision at that moment. Do you stick with it? Do you have faith? Do you continue or do you give up? In my case, I continued. I continued going to educate myself. I continued going to school. Even though I didn't get into the school I initially first applied to, I got into a school that was better for me. I can't speak for anyone else, but it was the best for me. 
So often you are in situations where you will think that since something didn't happen the way that you thought it would, you should give up. And that's a part of the down cycle of success. There's a natural down cycle of success. And when you come across that disappointment, that is your key to keep going. Because as you go down, there's going to be a turning point where it starts to come up again. In order to get to that turning point, you have to stick with what you were doing, but change the process of how you were doing it. The next decision that you have, and let me make sure is here. Good. The next decision is you're not a failure if it doesn't work out the way that you had planned. Instead, it's a sign for you to take time. It takes time. I'm going to give you a second story. Uh, This is the most recent story. Uh, If you go to the Quantum Designing Planner, you're going to find out that everything is based on my book here. If you can see it, Answers Unleashed to the Science of Attracting What You Want. And I wrote that book initially and There was a major issue that happened in the process of writing that book. Uh, In fact, when I was writing that book, uh, I had to go through a major surgery. And I was completely disappointed. I could not publish the book. It was 2019, September 2019. And I went to the doctor's office and it was supposed to be a normal checkup, but I found out that I needed a major surgery where literally I had to have organs removed. That's how, that's how major the surgery was. I'm perfectly fine and healthy today. And I'm very thankful to God because of that. But I thought I was a failure because I could not successfully complete my book and I had to go through surgery and the money that it took to go through the surgery was supposed to be the money allocated to write the book. So I had a catch 22. I love writing. My passion is writing. My purpose, my life purpose is being an author and sharing information. And I had to come across a decision. Was I going to give up writing the book and go through the surgery or was I going to be scared about the surgery and just pretend I didn't need to take care of my health and and just try and finish the book I chose to go through the surgery because I wanted to live and I wanted a successful healthy body But that meant I had to sacrifice writing and publishing the book in 2019. Well, this is how it all turns around. It takes time for the best situation to occur. Sometimes when you think that your failure, because it hasn't happened yet, whatever it is, your marriage, your relationship, your education, your company, your uh, endorsements, your fame, your book, the list can go on. Whenever you think you are a failure because it hasn't happened yet, I want you to stop and realize it's going to take time. And it's not overnight. The best relationship that you have ever going to experience or that you will ever experience hasn't even happened yet. You got to think about that. The best book in which you plan to write hasn't even happened yet. The best sources of income that is designed for you to obtain hasn't even happened yet. There's so many times there's things waiting for us. 
but we have to step through the challenging puzzles life throws at us because in those moments of those puzzles gives us the answer to start creating the best that is going to come. In my situation, I went through the surgery. It was a grueling surgery. Oh my God. <laughs> it was a grueling surgery. And it was really tough. And I remember my dear friends coaching, texting me, helping me get through the, the, the overwhelming healing process. I remember my church coming through and helping me financially because I had to take off work for three months and I didn't have at the time a way to be able to sustain myself for that length of time. And it was tough. And I spent that time not writing a book, but rather healing myself. And it wasn't until 2020, 2020, the pandemic happened and then my father passed away and I remember thinking to myself I really need to finish this book it was like my calling I I really needed to finish the book and how I, was I going to do it and then there were funds that came I, I want to say it's miraculous it wasn't miraculous I actually stepped f forward and and really sought out the right funding to be able to be able to produce this book series uh, but it was my decisions were kind of miraculous in that and I was able to get the funding and I finished writing the book but instead of the first chapter of what I had before the first chapter was how I had to make the six decisions to get through that surgery and that was powerful aspect that the book needed in order for it to be an amazing book that was able to eventually get on NBC, um, MSNBC, Fox, uh, Cheddar, um, CBS, The Doctors, and it, it had to wait. The best had to come after I successfully went through my ordeal so I could write it and put it in the book. My point is this. When you think that you have failed at something, that's the complete opposite. Rather, it has not happened yet. Whatever you think is there in front of you and it's not working out, that's because it's not the right time and more than likely it's not the right process. So whenever you have that inkling of that low feeling of the success curve, you got to think, I'm not a failure. It hasn't happened yet. It's just a matter of time. And that's what I am learning right now. And I have a feeling that's what you are learning too. And the last decision is this. Let me pull this up. Oop, let me go to the last decision is this. It is. Don't overwhelm yourself. Instead, start small. Don't overwhelm yourself. Instead, start small. Um, in the pandemic, uh, a lot of teachers went virtual. And I was one of them. I was a professor and I went virtual and successfully taught my calculus and statistics courses. And then when the fall semester came back, uh, not all the teachers had the ability to teach virtually. And so uh, I was one of those teachers that was requested to go back in and I was still healing. And I just knew that wasn't going to be feasible for myself and I take care of family. And I made the decision that I had to resign because there wasn't a, a virtual opportunity for me at that particular campus. I didn't know what to do. It seemed overwhelming. Like, what am I going to do? How am I going to be able to get through this time after I've just left where I was for the last 11 years? And it was quite overwhelming. 
uh, there is there is something psychological that happens when you're not working or you're not working towards something that is making income. I truly believe that people want to give to society and they want to be valued for doing it. And in our culture, value typically is appreciation or income for what it is that you do. And my decision to leave and not have the the touring speaking at the moment and time like I was used to and, and not have the campus teaching like I was used to, it really started affecting my brain. And I thought to myself, what am I experiencing here? And what I was experiencing was the need to stop feeling overwhelmed that I didn't have the same structure that I had been used to for the last 11 years. But instead, look at my new reality piece by piece. What does that mean? In my case, I'll give you an example. I had to realize that my reality was building what it was that I knew how to do, which is educational platforms, websites, streaming services that people can go online and learn mathematics. So I created the mathophobia.com website and building that educational program and system. But I had to start small. Start small with the basic advertisement. Start small with creating the website, making sure that it ran functionally and it was solid. Then coming up with the structure of what uh, was going to be offered, how it was going to be offered. And piece by piece by piece by piece is what I had to do so I wouldn't fall into the trap of feeling overwhelmed. And we can do that. You can do that a lot. I can do that a lot. We each can be overwhelmed at times, but we have to stop and realize, what can I do at this very moment? Just one thing. What can I do at this very moment that will help me move forward in this cycle so I will get to a trajectory, trajectory of going back up? You see, success isn't always just straight. That's not how it works. Success is a cycle of up and down, up and down. And you will go down as much as you go up. So I want you to remember this. When you leave this video, I want you to remember these three decisions. When you remember success and how it works, I want you to remember that I don't want you to give up, but have faith. And you're not a failure and it's going to take time. And lastly, don't overwhelm yourself. Start step by step. And as you do those step by step, you create the momentum over and over and over again. So you change the trajectory and you start going up again. I hope that you have enjoyed this talk. I am Olympia LaPointe, host of the Answers Unleashed, seen on AnswersUnleashed.com. And if you'd like to find me, you're welcome to go to Olympia LaPointe on LinkedIn, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And this is our weekly video, and I'm so happy to be back. I had to take care of a couple of things, and I'm back and solid for you so we can continue with our weekly videos. Again, for more information, go to AnswersUnleashed.com. I'm Olympia LaPointe, and I'll see you next time.